Hi, it's me, the Aquarist for fun. I'll be talking about what is probably the most debated topic in the aquascaping hobby today. It's DIY CO2 versus pressurized CO2. Okay, so I'll be talking about their pros and cons, and in the end of the video, I'll be talking about the costs. For beginners out there, why am I even talking about CO2? Well, in a planted aquarium like this one, CO2 is one of the three most important elements. The other two are lights, uh, lights and fertilizers. CO2 is basically required by plants for their respiration and growth. So, judging by the side-by-side -side video, you can clearly see that the pressurized CO2 will be able to give off a much better output compared to the DIY CO2. In addition, by using the pressurized CO2, I was able to maintain a 30 PSI pressure. So, I was able to use the bazooka diffuser that I got from CO2 Art. For the DIY CO2, I was able to use it once, but then it stopped working consistently. So I had to go back to the ordinary glass diffusers. One more thing to add is because the pressurized CO2 has a much better output, you can reach the desired CO2 levels in your tank within an hour or two. For the DIY CO2, you might need to add two to three more hours before the lighting period because its output is so weak that you might not be able to maintain and reach the desired CO2 levels. Let's get right to it. I'm gonna start with the pressurized CO2. Okay, so I've made a spreadsheet just so you can see the pros and cons side by side. Pressurized CO2, what are its advantages and disadvantages? Let's start with the advantages. Well, with pressurized CO2, there will be faster plant growth. There will be a stable CO2 production in the tank. It's easily controllable. It's customizable for any setup, any size of tank. And basically, if you're using a high-tech setup, it's essential to use a pressurized CO2. It can be toxic when you overdose. It's expensive for the initial setup. Refills can be expensive. Pressurized CO2 can be very daunting or very intimidating, especially for beginners. Now let's head over to the DIY CO2. Advantages. It's very inexpensive to set up. It's very inexpensive to run. And it can be difficult to overdose using DIY CO2. Disadvantages. It can be very uncontrollable. With it being uncontrollable comes another problem, probably the biggest problem. It's very inconsistent. DIY CO2 is not suitable for larger aquariums, basically larger than mine, larger than a 90 or 100 liter tank. Another problem that comes with its inconsistency is fluctuating levels. With fluctuating levels, you'll have algae problems. And you have to do regular mixture changes every now and then. Okay, so now that we've talked about the pros and the cons, let's head right over to what is probably the most, if not the most important topic about this discussion. The cost. Uh, don't you just love spreadsheets? Okay, so I've made a spreadsheet. There you'll see the... DIY CO2 versus the pressurized CO2. Initial setup cost in British pounds can be as low as 66 pounds. It's what I've spent for my pressurized CO2 setup. And in Philippine peso, it can be somewhere in the range of 4,300 peso. I had to do some research on how much it will cost here and in the Philippines. CO2 regulator, it's a cheap one from eBay that I got. It's the same product that I see in the Philippines. It's MUFAN or WUFAN. For the DIY CO2 setup, initial cost can be as low as zero, technically, because it's DIY. But if you want to go fancy like me, it cost me 64 to 65 pounds. The bulk of that money went to this setup. 
it has a gauge, it has a bubble counter, and to the solenoid valve. If you're going to go to the Philippines, it's going to cost you 1,200 peso. It's a whole lot cheaper, probably why most skaters out there prefer or start out with the DIY CO2. But if you're here in the UK, I'd suggest just go with a pressurized CO2. Okay, CO2 diffuser and check valve is essential, so I've added it in. Next up, how long will one setup run for two bubbles per second for eight hours? Okay, since this is my first pressurized CO2 setup, I have no idea how long a two kilogram CO2 tank will last. I did some research and it says it can reach as long as approximately seven to eight months. Now, I saw that approximation in the UCAPS or UK APS website and on Philippine Facebook groups. Going to the DIY CO2, it can last at best four to six weeks. On my DIY CO2, I can barely make it to five weeks. And on the succeeding refills, it only lasts me a week. Like I said earlier, it's very inconsistent. Now, running costs. How much will it cost me for an entire year? For the two kilogram pressurized CO2, since one tank can last up to seven to eight months, one refill here in the UK is averaging around 15 pounds. It can be cheaper in some areas. It can be more expensive, especially in the central London area. And in the Philippine markets, I asked friends about it. I looked through Facebook groups and according to them, it can cost you around 150 peso per refill and can reach up to 250. For the DIY CO2, I used to buy the refills, the citric acid and baking soda from Amazon. It's going to cost me 60 to 90 pounds a year. Now, after all that, what is my personal recommendation? It's cheaper in the long run, less hassle. You'll get consistent plant growth under the right circumstances. So, the CO2 setup won this loud and clear. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe and leave a thumbs up. There will be a whole lot more videos like this in the future, so please subscribe, don't miss out. A special shout out to my cousins and family in the USA, to Ate Doris, Kuya Dennis, Auntie Lumen, Ate Claudette, and Kuya Keith. And to all my nieces and nephews, Enzo, Basti, Joaquin, and Danny. Thank you all for the support. That's it for me. I'm the Aquarius for fun. Bye.